the head of Elevate CCF Maine. Let us all welcome Pastor, Pastor Marty Okaya. Pastor Marty, morning. Thank morning. you, thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's such a blessing to be here. And those also joining us via Zoom, hello, hello. Again, can you greet your seatmate? Salima, hi, hello. I'm glad you are beside me. And so again, this place is truly safe, and I'm so glad we can do physical worship uh, together, not just in the main, but of course, in the satellites as well. And of course, greetings from your uh, spiritual family in CCF Center. Now, who among you, as we continue with our series, Money, Good or Evil, who among you, you want to earn more money? Can you raise your hand? Wow, okay dito, Pastor X. Honest talaga ang mga tao sa CCF Eastwood. So, I really believe all of us, we want to earn money, and that's why we're talking about Money, is it good or evil? And it's not wrong to have that kind of desire. In fact, the growth of our money is dependent on how we use this. Right? So that's what we're going to focus as we continue with this series. I think we've been learning for the past few weeks, uh, or last week when Pastor Peter spoke, we learned two perspectives, two treasures, earthly, where are you going to invest? Earthly or heavenly treasure, we learn two perspectives. Is it a man-centered perspective when it comes to usage of money? Or is it God-centered? Or who is your master? Is it God or wealth? And of course, it talks about the heart. Because it's easy, it's easy to say, you know, money is not really my focus. I, money is really not my God. But how we use it and how it controls us determine if money is our God or not. And like what I said earlier, if we want to earn money, more money, it's actually dependent on how we use it. And that's what we're going to focus today, this morning, as we continue with this series, because we want to answer the question, what is really the best use of money? Now, how do you use your money? There are many ways to use your money, but let me give you some of the ways that we use our money. We spend it. Who well, among you like spending your money or your spouse's money? Okay, you won't raise your hand, okay? <laughs> or your parents' money, right? We love to spend it because we get things that we want. We travel. We go to the places that we want to go. But it's not just about spending. We also use money to save. Some of us were very good in saving. Like my wife, she's very good in saving. And I'm very good with spending, so I have to confess that's one of my struggles. And for some people, I know uh, businessmen and different people, even young people today, they love to invest, whether in stocks or in another business or in crypto, which it crashed recently. But some people, they love to invest. And another way to use money is to give. Now, can you turn to your seatmate and say, because yeah. that's one way diba, to use our money. Do you have money? Can I have? Right? So I don't know if your seatmate will give you money or not. But look at what Jesus Christ said. Because all of these things are good. When you spend it, God doesn't say don't spend your money. Of course, we need to spend our money. And God allows us and also is blessed when we spend that. It's not wrong to spend it as long as we spend it the right way. And of course, God wants us to save our money. Of course, God wants us to invest. We can see that in scriptures. In fact, in one parable of Jesus, he talked to the servant, or there's this parable, the master talked to the servant, you should have put that money or that talent to the bank and it will gain interest. So investment is also not a bad thing, it's good. And giving, Jesus talked about that. But among the four things, Jesus highlighted one thing that he said, when you do this, you are blessed even more. Let's look at the passage in Acts chapter 20, verse 35, which the Apostle Paul was the one sharing this. Let's read this together. One, two, three, go. In everything, I showed you that by working hard in this manner, you must help the weak. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. What are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ? That he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So give a nudge to your seatmate. Oh, mamigay ka na. Kasi sabi, oh, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So among the four, it seems like, and this is our topic for today, giving is the best use of money. Now maybe some of you are thinking, ah, ito na naman about giving. What does that mean, Pastor Marty? Does that, th does that mean that I'm going to give all my savings, all my money? No, that's not what Jesus Christ is saying. 
What he is saying is our heart, our attitude. Is it our desire to be a giver? Is it our desire to be generous? Because the problem with a lot of people in this world right now, we are not generous. Can you ask your seatmate, am I generous? Well, I know, I also could tell. Okay, so I really believe CCF Eastwood family, you are generous people. I really believe our CCF family, you know, we have a lot of givers in CCF, but we need to develop a heart that is generous. When I say giving is the best use of money, this is what I mean. God wants us to have a generous heart. This is really God's desire. He wants us to be generous. That's why he modeled giving. He gave his life. He gave us provision. He gave us many things. He is the model, perfect model of giving. But in our case, God wants us to be generous as well. In other words, when we are generous, we seek ways to give. When God has given us extra, when God has given us something, we think of ways already, okay, how will I use my money? We discuss this with our spouse. We discuss it with our family. How can we be a blessing to other people? Because it's in your heart. And when I say we have a generous heart, we allot a portion or possibly all. For some people, they really give all of their extra income in giving. We give a portion of our extra income to support others, to be a blessing to others. And we see money as a tool to bless others more than ourselves. I really believe that's the heart of someone who is generous. He seeks or she seeks ways to give. She allots or he allots a portion of his extra income to give. And he sees money as a tool. It's not something that controls him or her. It's something that he controls so that he can be a blessing to other people. That's why giving is the best use of money. So why is it the best use of money? And how do we develop that kind of generous heart? Today, that's what we're going to learn. We have three points today that I hope you can remember, and I hope you can be convinced that giving is the best use of money. So that we won't forget that, tell your seatmate, giving the best use of money. One, two, three, go. There. So, why is it the best use of money? Because giving honors God, giving blesses others, and giving reaps rewards. Now, I know what uh, some of you are thinking, parang gusto ko na sa number three kagad, Pastor Marty. I want the rewards right away. But before we go that, we need to set our hearts right first because giving honors God and blesses others. So what does that mean? Why does it honor God when we give to Him and to other people? Let's look at this passage. Giving honors God. In Psalm 24 verse 1, let's read this together. The earth is the Lord's. All it contains, the world and those who dwell in it. Everything that you see, the sea in the sky, our oxygen, the air that we breathe, the clouds, the stars, the galaxies, the whole universe is in the palm of our God. He owns everything. And not just in the sky or in the universe, even in the land, the sea, the water that we have, the capacity to produce electricity, all of the minerals that we see in this world, the iron, the wood, all of the things that constructs houses, that we use to construct houses, buildings, and even cars, all of those things came from God. He owns everything. So if God is not generous, He's not going to give that. We won't have the houses. We won't have the food that we need. We won't have the things that we need to survive and to live our lives. And guess what? Even Wi-Fi, God created certain things so that we can produce Wi-Fi here on earth. All of those things, the phone, everything is the Lord's. And look at what he says here in Deuteronomy chapter 8. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who is giving you the power to make wealth. Even your ability to work hard, even your ability to be wise in your business, to be successful in the workplace, to make sure that your company is growing. Do you know that that comes from the Lord? Because God can take that away anytime. And then look at the next part, that He may confirm His covenant which He swore to your fathers as it is this day. Everything is the Lord's. And we need to realize that. That's very important because it's so hard to honor God if we don't see that He owns everything. 
Sometimes kasi with our money, here's how we view our money and our things. This is mine. I worked hard for it. I was so skilled. I graduated with honors. I built this business from the ground up. I was successful in the company. I was a middle management before and now I'm the CEO. I did all the hard work. But guess what? God can take that away in an instant. That's why we have to accept that God owns everything and He can give and take it away. It's hard to honor God if we don't have this mindset. That's why the first part, why giving is the best use of money, because it honors the Lord that He is God. And here's what I realize. Uh, when we have the mindset that this thing that we're doing, giving, honors God, and we realize that He owns everything, money doesn't control us. Money doesn't have power over us because we know this is yours, Lord. This is not mine. You just gave this to me. You just allowed me to be a good steward here. That's why in the New Testament, a lot of parables talk about the usage of money, the usage of what God has given us. But a lot of people fail to be good stewards of it. What's our message again? Giving the best use of money. Again, tell your seatmate, giving the best use of money. Oh, yeah. So, giving honors the Lord. Let's look, let's look at this passage. That's why, when, when, since God owns everything, since God is the creator, He can give, He can take it away. Imagine that mindset. It's just like you're, you have a boss, a physical boss, that you are so kind to because He has the final say if you're going to stay at work or not. If you have that kind of boss, you're going to be good to that person. When the boss says, Libre bon man ng coffee, what are you going to do? Sige po, right? I remember before when I was working in, in the corporate world, in the advertising company, that's what one of our boss said, oh, let's go for coffee. And then here's me, I want to please my boss. Siyempre, my boss earns more, pero nandun yung desire na, I, maybe I need to you know, buy her coffee or buy her something so that she will be happy with me, so that she can see that I'm doing well and I'm okay and I'm a good sport and I'm a good worker, Right? That's how we do, how we live our lives when it comes to people we see as authority or has in control or is in control. What more God? How come human bosses, we treat that way because we want to honor them, because we don't want to lose our job, because we want to earn more. But pagdating kay God, when it comes to God, it's just like, ah, it's okay, I know God is there. We should have that kind of respect. We should have that kind of desire to honor Him. That's why the writer of Proverbs said, Honor the Lord from your wealth, from what He has given you. And from the, what's that? First of all your produce. You know the word first? It's the best. In the olden times, in the Old Testament, even in the New Testament, when they farm, when they reap the crops, they get the best of the best and they give it to God. That's the first of all of your produce. In the Old Testament, for the Jewish people, that's how God instructed the Israelites. And even for those who are following the Lord, that's how He instructed them. I've given you the capacity to have your flocks, to have your farms, to have all of these things. Honor me with your wealth. And then in Malachi, and that's why God was also so serious in treating the Israelites when it comes to giving. Because it dishonors Him if we don't give. For example, in Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 to 10. Let's read this together. Will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, how have we, how have we robbed you in tithes and offerings? Now, tithes are different from offerings. Tithes is tenth, what he has given you. You apportion tenth of it and you give it to the Lord. Offering is over and above the tithe. If God has impressed in your heart, okay, to give this much, that's an offering. It may be given to a company, to, to a community. It may be given to the church. It may be given to a group of people. Or it may be given to missionaries to continue the Lord's work. That's offerings. And then in verse 9, look at the consequence if we don't give. You are cursed with a curse for you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. You see how God was dealing with those people who doesn't honor the Lord? You see, God is very serious when it comes to giving. And a lot of people don't see that. We see giving as, okay, I know I need to give. It's a tradition. I need to give because God blesses me. A lot of people usually just associate giving with, okay, when I give, God blesses me. And that's not wrong. That's also correct. And we're going to discuss that. But before we learn that, 
We need to realize first, the reason why I give, I have to honor God. Because He is God. I am just a human being. He can take away everything. And I don't want God to be against me. Imagine God telling that to the Filipino people. Imagine God telling this to your family. Imagine God telling this to CCF. Alam mo kayo CCF ha? Are you, you're robbing me. I don't want that to happen. Well, I'm glad that CCF family, you are givers. That's why, can you tell your seatmate, generous ka pala eh. Sabi mo, generous ka pala. So, okay. But look, look at how God is treating those people who are not giving back to Him, who are not honoring Him. Look at the next part. And then in Malachi, He said, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. Test me now. The only time that God said, test me now, is in the aspect of giving. Test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. Because I know our, re our reasons why we don't give. Sometimes, or a lot of times, our reason is, God, sakto lang eh. Right? This is just enough for me. For my family. I mean, I'm, I'm going to give. Definitely, Lord, I'm going to give. But can you just give me a slack right now? I can't give right now. Maybe that was the reason for the Israelites. Maybe they were saying, but we just got conquered by another empire. Or we are just recovering for, from the 70 years of being you know, under the Babylonian, under the Persian empire. Can you just let us you know, settle down, Lord? I don't know their reasons, but maybe they were having excuses for not giving. But in God's eyes, you don't trust me. That's why give and test me in this, I tell you. You feel like it's just enough for you, I promise you. When you give because you want to honor me, test me. I'm going to open for you the windows of heaven. I want to see that happen. But sometimes we lack faith. That's why we need to realize that God owns everything so that we give to honor Him. And look at in the Old Testament, it, at the start of the Old Testament, in the book of Genesis, they practice honoring God by giving already. So there was this war that Abraham went to. He rescued Lot and eventually he gave honor to the king of Salem, Melchizedek. And this is what he said. Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was a priest of God Most High. He blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. Blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abraham decided, I'm going to give him tenth of what I got. Because there was a war. He won that war. He got stuff from that war. And the stuff that he get, he apportioned tenth of it, the tithe. And he honored God. Some say, some scholars say that this one is a present, the presence of the Lord was there. And Melchizedek, king of Salem. That's why Abraham was honoring God when he gave his tenth. And not just Abraham. Look at the next part. Even in Jacob, look at what happened to Jacob. Jacob made a vow saying, If God will be with me and will keep me on this journey that I take and will give me food to eat and garments to wear and I return to my father's house in safety, then the Lord will be my God. This stone which I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And what happened? Of all that God has given me, I will surely give what? I'm going to give a tenth to you. Where did he learn that? Most probably from Isaac, from Abraham. It was passed on from one generation to another. Because practicing giving to God, tithing, honors the Lord. You know, some people, they debate left and right. Is tithing still needs to be practiced now or not? And some Christians would say, you know, you don't need to tithe. That's just for the Israelites. And some Christians would say, you still need to tithe. But here's what I believe. God is honor, honored when we give. So when we tithe from our hearts, whether you feel like, you know, biblically it's just for the Israelites, but from your heart, God is impressing on you. You are to tithe. And God is calling you to tithe because it's in His scripture. I tell you, that honors the Lord. Not just from Jacob, even the whole Israelites. When Moses was instructing the Israelites, thus all the tithe in the Levi book of Leviticus of the land, of the seed of the land, or of the fruit of the tree, kaninayon, is the Lord's. It's not actually, everything is the Lord's. 
But what God is just telling the people, I want you to practice this because it's going to discipline you. It's going to protect you from the love of money. And it's going to remind you that I am God and you're not. I am grateful God created tithing. It's not just for Him. It's for us. Because He doesn't need anything. He can get anything, actually. He owns everything. But He created it so that His people will be reminded that's not actually yours. I want you to be a good steward of it. That's why Moses said, you have to tithe because it is the Lord's. It is holy to God. Not just them. Even in the New Testament, Jesus alluded to this. Woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, you are hypocrites. For you tithe mint and dill and cumin and have neglected the weightier provisions of the law, justice and mercy and faithfulness. Because he was saying to them, yes, you're doing tithing, but you're not honoring me in certain areas. And Jesus said, these are the things you should have done. Meaning to say, continue the tithing, the giving, but also don't neglect honoring your parents. Don't neglect helping the poor. Don't neglect being kind to others. Because some people, that's their mindset of spirituality. Oh, I'm a giver, ah. I'm giving a lot of things. Ilan yung tinight mo? Ako, 20%. I'm more spiritual. No! In God's eyes, the heart is the key. We don't brag when we give more. We honor God when we give more. We honor God whatever we, we give as long as it's from our hearts. So even in the New Testament, and not just in the New Testament, it has been a continued practice when the church started in the book of Acts as they continued and passed on a godly legacy in the early church in the Roman Empire and so on and so forth until today, God is honored when we tithe. Look at this person. You know Henry Crowell, the founder of Quaker Oats. Henry Crowell started giving 10% of his income when he started working, when he started having this business. And eventually, the more God blessed him because of giving, the more he gave. Actually, maybe most probably, the more that he gave, the more he received from the Lord. To the point that he started giving 60 to 70% of his income because he was well provided for. And not just that, he learned contentment. And this is what I appreciate about giving. It teaches us contentment. People who doesn't usually give or not generous, they have a problem with contentment because they want more. And not just Henry Crowell, even William Colgate. Are you familiar with William Colgate? Of course, right? Toothpaste, right? So he created a business, but before he created a business, he started to think of having a soap company. So he went to and tried to learn how to make this business happen. And the person that mentored him told him, William, don't ever forget to give to the Lord what he has given you. Give your tithe to him. And he started doing that. When he had his own business, he started giving 10% and then 20% and then 30% until eventually he decided to give 50% of his income. And he was happy doing that. That's why, look at this passage in 2 Corinthians. Let's read this together. Now, this I say, can I hear your voices? He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must do just as he has purpose in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion. Let's read it smiling, with a smiling face, although I can't see your smile. For God... Loves a cheerful giver, right? So when you give later on, sa ating mga tight box, smile. Although they won't see you, okay? They won't see your smile. They will see the smiling eyes. But the point of this passage is we give because it's from our hearts. We give because it's our desire. I don't know if you've experienced that. When you gave and it's in your heart's desire, it puts smile on your face and it's easy to let it go. When there's no joy in giving, it's just so hard. And the reason for a lot of people why there's no joy in giving may be because we don't want to honor God. 
Because if we realize this is honoring to the Lord and He's our master, just like any boss that you want to honor, right? Here on earth, you want to honor them. You want to do good to them. It's the same way. If I want to honor the King of Kings, it's my joy. Okay, Lord, here's the tenth. You said it in your word. I'm going to give it joyfully, cheerfully, because this is all yours. You know what I realized? Tithing honors God. I mentioned this earlier. It protect us, protects us from the love of money and reminds us that God owns everything. I really believe one of the best ways to protect you and me from the love of money, and that's what the world will tell you. That's what the world will convince you of. Love money. Although they won't say the phrase love money, but everything around us would say, you need more money to buy this. You need more money to invest here. You need more money because all of your friends have traveled there and you haven't. That's what social media does. You need more money because you don't have a new car. You need more money because your car is three years old. Three years old pa lang, gusto mo nang palitan. You need more money because there's a new iPhone or a new Samsung. And yours is one year old. One year old pa lang, right? That's what the world says. You need more money because of what you see online, your investment. You want to earn money, you go to this kind of stocks. If you go to this one, so I need more money here, I need more money here. And look at what the world, what the people are doing. Borrow here, borrow here, borrow here. Because they think if I do all of these things, I'm going to earn more money. And that's the love of money already. It consumed us. It's very subtle. It didn't say, oh, you love money. I know it didn't say that. But it lured us to love money. That's the ways of Satan. So what did God do? He created tithing. What did God do? He told his people, tithe. Because when you tithe, it protects you from the love of money. When you practice that habitually and you started giving more to him and of course supporting others, it reminds you, Lord, this is all yours. And the beautiful thing there as we have seen, God blesses those people. What's our message again? Giving the best use of money. Again, turn to your seat, may say giving. The best use of money. Why? Because giving honors the Lord. Giving blesses others. Now turn to your seatmate and say, Bless mo naman ako. Kasi sabi ni God eh, di ba? Giving blesses others. Feeling ko talaga later maraming manlilibre. Okay? Feeling ko talaga, Pastor X, na ako convict na sila. Sige na nga, lilibre ko na itong katabi ko. Anyway, so God blesses others. What does that mean? Okay, let's look at 1 Timothy 6, 17 to 18. Instruct those who are rich in this present world not to be conceited or to fix their hope on the uncertainty of riches. So in other words, God is also calling the rich people and God will bless people to be rich, but He has a calling to them not to be conceited, not to fix their hope on their riches because God can take that away in an instant, but instead focus on God who richly supplies us with all things to enjoy. And I love that phrase, richly supplies us all things to enjoy because I think it's not just me, but you also know of people who are rich, but they don't enjoy their wealth. Right? There are people in this world, they're so rich and they don't enjoy their wealth. You know, there's recent, um, uh, the, uh, there's recent legal case between two celebrities. I think some of you are following that legal case between two celebrities, the Pirates of the Caribbean celebrity and the Aquaman 2 or Aquaman girl celebrity. And they're very rich. I think specifically the guy, but they're not happy with the riches, to the point that you see it there already in their legal case. You see that both of them are being canceled because some people are supporting the Aquaman girl and other people or a lot of people are supporting the one from Pirates of the Caribbean. You know that case. People are following that. That's an example of people who are rich, focused on their riches, and as a result, they didn't enjoy their riches. Imagine that. And some people, you know why they don't enjoy their riches? This is what happened there. We earn a lot of money. And then our lifestyle increased. So when our lifestyle increased, we need more money to sustain that lifestyle. When there comes problems in our life, just like what happened to this celebrity, that he lost certain, you know, uh, certain movies because he got canceled. He needed more money to sustain that lifestyle. As a result, 
he's not enjoying. Do you see that, the problem with the love of money? When we love money too much, it consumes us. And the more we want it. Kaya nga, I, I, I realize, hindi toto, it's not real when you say, Lord, when you give this, okay na ako dito. Right? When, you, when I have these things, when I get my first business, I'm content. I realize a lot of times that's not true. Because contentment comes from God when we focus on Him. Not if we get what we want. That's not where we get contentment. And going back to the passage, that's why Paul told Timothy, instruct them, those who are rich, to do good. To be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share. So if you're seated beside someone who is rich, oh, follow mo to. Be generous and be ready to share. That's being a blessing to other people. And in 2 Corinthians, Paul again mentioned this. Now brethren, we wish to make known to you the grace of God which has been given in the churches of Macedonia that in a great ordeal of affliction, their abundance of joy and their deep poverty overflowed in, their, in the wealth of their liberality. You know what Paul is saying? The church in Macedonia, although they were struggling financially, they were afflicted with a great ordeal and some of them were in deep poverty. They still were gracious enough to give the wealth of their liberality. They still gave to the work of the Lord, to Paul, to the other workers during that time. Imagine, so it doesn't mean that giving is just for rich people. In fact, even if you're not that rich or you have just enough, God has given you the capacity to give. That's why in another passage, look at what he said. For I testify that according to their ability, beyond their ability, the church in Macedonia, they gave of their own accord, begging us with much urgent, urging for the favor of participation in the support of the saints. Imagine, sila na yung nagihirap, they're struggling financially, and they are the ones telling Paul, Paul, we really want to give. And I believe Paul was saying, no, 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 you have problems at the Macedonian churches. You don't need to give to us. No, we really want to give. Please take these things. Sana ganun, no? Sana ganun yung generous hearts natin. Now, we are the ones begging, please help, please help us give to you. Accept our generous hearts because this is what God has placed in our hearts. We want to give. And this, not as we had expected, but they first gave themselves to the Lord, meaning to say they started serving God and to us by the will of God. I realized when we serve more, the Lord, when He is truly our master and we give our lives to Him, the pockets will be easier to give. It starts with our life. That's why a lot of people are not generous. Maybe because we haven't given our all to Him. What's our message again? Giving is the best what use of money. Now, I want you to listen to this testimony. I will flash, I will show the video of this testimony of one of our workers. He's a campus missionary. God has been blessing him with a lot of supporters. But it's not just that. God used his life to also be a blessing to others. And so can we show that video? Can we show the testimony so that you can be blessed? I'm Ian Tanchinko. Good day to everyone. I'm Ian Tanchinko, a campus missionary in Elevate, Maine. Good day to everyone. I'm Ian Tanchinko, a campus missionary in Elevate, Maine. Good day to ev good day to everyone. Let's wait for that one. While we're waiting for that testimony, look at this, ah. Huh? Uh, there, there you go. Okay. Wait, so, me. It's a good day to everyone. I'm Ian Tanchinko, a campus missionary in Elevate, Maine. I am blessed with a lovely wife. Her name is Arian, and three wonderful baby girls, Yana, Kali, and Nala. I gave my life to Jesus when I was in college when a group of missionaries and student leaders reached out to me. Before I had a relationship with Christ, I was living an empty life and I had no particular aspirations for myself. Not long after I accepted Christ, I learned about His mission to make disciples. And I started to share the gospel to my classmates and other schoolmates on my campus. At this same early stage of my Christian life, I also learned to surrender my finances to the Lord. God moved me to tithe as well as to invest in the small amounts I could 
into his mission by supporting missionaries. By the time that I was about to graduate, I had but one desire, that was to serve the Lord as a missionary. Fast forward to 2016, I got married to my lovely wife, and she got pregnant with her first baby two months after our wedding, during my wife's fifth month of pregnancy, despite of all the challenges that we were facing that time. This was when God gave both my wife and I the go signal for me to enter into campus ministry as a full-time missionary. At this point in time, we understood what it meant for us to be full-time missionaries. It meant that we would both leave our decent paying jobs and enter into sacrificial work building the kingdom of God in the campuses. It was a leap of faith for both of us because we were just starting out and didn't have the savings to sustain us in this transition. But although we didn't know how we would survive for the next three months with bills, hospitalizations, and daily expenses, we knew that this is what God wanted us to do. As we obeyed the Lord, we saw His mighty hand work in our midst through bills get suddenly getting paid for to unexpected grocery deliveries when we didn't know what to eat the next day. Just like how God provided manna for the Israelites for their daily bread in the desert, we experienced God's faithful provision during this season. This was the moment in our lives when God taught us the value of trusting Him every day for our needs. Just like what it says in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 to 23, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never comes to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Perhaps in the life of every Elevate missionary, one of the most wonderful aspects of our calling is that we're not paid to do the things that we do. Missionaries in Elevate are all here because we are compelled by the love of Christ to reach out to every student that we could possibly could. And we're able to live and do these things through the help of our faithful ministry partners who journeys with us through their love gifts and support. During my season of support raising, God allowed me to witness His work beyond what our minds could perceive. Naturally, when you are looking for a ministry partner, you would think about the people with a lot of extra income to spare. But God also allowed me to meet ministry partners from all walks of life. I met ministry partners who were well off. I met ministry partners who were just earning just enough. And ministry partners who were financially struggling. I was especially blessed when I met this one particular ministry partner and asked for an opportunity to support right after she graduated. When I shared with her the vision, she told me to wait for a bit as she was still looking for a job. True enough, after a few months, she landed a job. And despite only having a starting salary and a family to support, she began to give to our mission work as well. And four years later, up to this day, she is one of our most faithful ministry supporters. In our five years serving here in Elevate, we have learned a lot. But perhaps one of the best lessons that we have learned from God in this journey is that we're blessed to be a blessing. One of our prayers before entering into full-time work is that God would continue to enable us to tithe and bless fellow missionaries and pastors. By God's grace and provision, we are blessed to be a blessing to other Elevate missionaries, a pastor from a small community church in Angono, and a scholar through another organization. Even though life is still uncertain for us every month, God had shown us His faithfulness that He will not let us go hungry and homeless when we surrender every centavo to Him and live in obedience to His will. Again, I'm Ian Tanchingo, an Elevate missionary, and together with my wife Arian and our children, we're blessed to be a blessing. Thank you and God bless. You know, you know, from the bottom of my heart, I just want to encourage and I want to appreciate. I know some of you are giving to our campus missionaries because this is very close to me. We have a lot of missionaries. We have over 150 campus workers in the Philippines. And you guys, some of you have been giving. So I really want to appreciate. I want to thank you for doing that. Can we just give a clap offering to the Lord for those who are giving to our workers? Because we couldn't do this work without you. We have over 2,000 leaders all over the Philippines, actually all over the world. We have Elevate Worldwide. We are reaching to more than 15,000 young people, more than 300 campuses in the Philippines. And that's because God has impressed to some of you to give to the work of the Lord. So again, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for giving to the Lord. And you know what I realize as we continue? Yes, let's give a club offering again to God for that. One of, one of the things I realized, when we bless others, usually the person who is blessed the most when it comes to giving, it's not just the, rece it's not the recipient actually. 
It's the one who gave. You know why it blesses us when we give? And I've experienced that. Not just me. My wife is very generous. We've been also supporting or trying to support missionaries as well because of what God has given us. It's my wife who reminds me of that. And he, this, these are some of the ways that blesses me as a giver. And some of you have given or a lot of you have given. This is your blessing as well. It gives us good reputation. Have you noticed those people who are generous? You really don't see a lot of negative things, even though there are negative things about them. Especially if you're the recipient. Ay, mabait yan. Bakit? You got something from that person. So usually those people who are generous, they have good reputation in society and their community. It blesses us because it teaches us contentment. We realize that I don't really need that, and it protects us from the love of money. Number three, it protects us from the love of money. And number four, there's God's reward. And that's what we're going to look at as we look at number three. Because when you say giving is the best use of money, it also means that we will reap the reward. That's not the main focus. I really believe the main focus is to honor God. I really believe second to that is to bless others. But biblically, God has promised as well, when we give, definitely we will receive. We will reap the reward. When, where can we find that? Look at these verses. We read this earlier. Honor the Lord from your wealth, from the first of all your produce. And what did God say to, through the psalmist? So your barns will be filled with plenty. In other words, you have a farm, it will be filled with plenty. Your vats will overflow with new wine. So all of your business, your work, I will bless. I'll give you wisdom when you honor me and your first of the produce you give to me. That's God's blessing. He said it in His Word, not just in the Old Testament. But look, even Jesus Christ said, Give, and there's a song of this. If some of you know, I think know that. Give, and it will be given to you. They will pour it into your lap, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Imagine a container, a glass container, putting it with money. The, the paper kind of money and not coins, putting money there. And then as you put money, you notice that there's still space. How will you notice that there's still space? You press it down, right? You press it down. So when you press it down, you put more money there. And how will you make sure that there's still space? You shake it so that you'll see, oh, my space, but you put more, put more. And this one, it's not just full, it's overflowing and running over. For by the standard of measure, it will be measured to you in return. And I know some of you are thinking, Pastor Martin, hindi ko yata na experience yan. I know that passage, pero parang hindi ganun yung aking glass. That's not my glass container. My glass container, when I press it down, it's empty. My glass container, when I shake it, kakalog kalog, okay? It's gonna make noise. Nothing's there. What are you saying that Jesus Christ is saying that you will have good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over? And here's the problem that I realize. Because I also had that problem. That when I look at my life, parang hindi naman overflowing. There was, there was a time in my life that I felt it. And this is what I realized. Look at this passage. Now this I say, He what? who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. You might be thinking, that's not connected to giving. But here's the thing. Our problem is I don't give based on what God has purposed in my heart. You saw the passage earlier. By the standard of measure that you give, you will also receive that same standard of measure. That phrase was very relevant to the Israelites. Because some of them in the Old Testament, they knew they were cheating their standard of measure. They have a weighing scale. That's how they use when they sell stuff. That's how they use, oh, you want one talent? And they have a weighing scale. And some of them, they cheat by adjusting the weighing scale. In fact, some of them, they have two weighing scale. That's why in the book of Leviticus, God was telling the Israelites, don't have two weighing scale. Just one and be honest and make sure that's the right standard. Because here's the truth. If I give based on His standards, then He blesses me based on His standards. But if I don't give based on His standards, 
then don't expect God to bless you based on His standards. That's the problem with a lot of Christians. That's why we're not reaping the blessing that God wants us to have. Because iba yung standard natin eh. It's not according to what He has purpose in our hearts. That's why it's a hard thing. God is going to reveal to you, this is what I want you to give. I know you have these things. I'll provide for you for these things in your life. I'll make sure, trust me, that all your needs are met. But with what I have given you, this is what you give. That's why the more you spend time with the Lord, the more you realize, okay, Lord, this is what you have placed in my heart. I have to give this to honor you, to be, a, to be a blessing to others, and so that the standard of blessing that I receive is based on your standards. What's our message again? Giving is what? The best use of money. Again, turn to your seatmate. Tell your seatmate before he forgets. Giving is the best use of money. And look at God's promise. Look at in Malachi. Look at what he promised here. When we give, when we give our tithe, when we honor God and bless other people, I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not destroy the fruits of the ground. You know, you see what God is doing here? He's going to protect your crops, going to protect your business, going to protect your work. Nor will your vine in the field cast its grapes, says the Lord of hosts. All the nations will call you blessed, for you shall be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Imagine, even the capacity to earn, He's going to protect you and grant you wisdom. But if you don't give or we don't give based on his standards, you're going to notice that. Sometimes there's a struggle at work and we don't have the wisdom. Sometimes our businesses, because we're not being honest with our business, we're not giving back to God, he's not honoring us. He's not honoring the business as well. It has an effect. You might be thinking, it's not affecting me financially, but it's going to affect you eventually because of what's happening at work, what's happening with the family, what's happening with your investment, what's happening at your business, what's happening in every aspect of your life that requires money. Sometimes God uses that to wake you up or to wake us up. Hui, give. That's all mine. I can take that away. And then look at this passage. This is the purpose why He richly blesses us. God is able to make all grace abound to you so that always having all sufficiency in everything, in other words, He will never fail to provide all that we need. Even uh, the things that we want, He usually gives that. Maybe not everything, but He gives it anyway. For what purpose? That you and me may have an abundance for every good deed. Just like what Ian, our missionary, realized, because of the blessing God has given to him, he was compelled to be a blessing to others. That's why God richly blesses us. He blesses us to be a blessing. We reap the reward not just for ourselves, but because he is calling us, Hui, I want you to do good things. It may be in your small group, helping other people, members in your small group, those who are sick, it can be giving to a mission agency, to missionaries that are sent abroad, to our campus missionaries in Elevate. It may be giving to the Lord's work in CCF, maybe supporting the out-of-school youth of Uplift, or other mission agency or organizations that CCF has that requires financial support. God blesses us with extra income so that we can be a blessing to others. You know, I really appreciate certain businessmen that I know with CCF that it's in their heart always whenever the business expands that businessman will call me Pastor Marty God has blessed me who are missionaries who are in need right now can you give me their names I want to give so I really appreciate that because that is a heart that is generous that he knows the reason why God is blessing him is not just for himself but mostly for other people mostly to honor God Mostly to bless others so that he can really be a blessing. What's our message again as we end, are about to end? Giving is the best use of money. I really pray that God will create in each and every one of us a generous kind of heart. Because I really believe a generous kind of heart honors God, 
it blesses other people, and we reap the reward. Now, I'm going to end with this story because maybe for some of you, you might be thinking, how will I be motivated, Pastor Marty, to give? Because I'm not that motivated. I know I need to give, but it's not in my heart. You know, there's this story of this father. He's working as a driver uh, in, in one of the... In, in, he, he has a boss. He's very, the boss was very rich, and he's the driver of that boss. And then he, th- this guy has been working with this boss for several years already. He's so trusted. The boss trusts him. The boss gave him the key to his room at his house. He can enter his house anytime to get stuff because sometimes that's what the boss do. Go to my house, get these things. And he even knows the password or the combination of the safe where he gets money to give to the boss to pay for certain bills. So this driver was very trusted. And then one day, his son got sick. So sick that when he brought his son to the hospital, the doctor said, we need to operate your son right away, but you need this amount of money. So he got so confused, he didn't know what to do, to the point that he did a crazy thing. When his boss was so busy in his office doing a lot of meetings, the guy, the driver, decided to go to the house of his boss, open the safe because he knows there's a lot of money there, got hundreds of thousands there, and used that money, paid the hospital and said, please, start with the operation so that my, my son can survive. And because he got so guilty, he decided to turn off his phone and no longer communicate with his boss. A few hours later, the boss left the office. He was calling his driver and the driver was not picking up. So he's wondering what happened to my driver. And then eventually he got home. He just drove the car and went home. And when he went home, somebody told him, boss, look at this CCTV. Someone stole at your room. Uh, Someone went to your room, your driver. And he got into that safe. He stole a lot of money. And the boss was shocked. And he said, what's happening to him? So again, he tried calling his driver. The driver was not picking up out of coverage area, out of reach. And he decided, okay, maybe there's a problem. So he went to the place where the driver lives. So when he went there, he talked to certain people. Do you know where this guy is, where my driver is? Ah, boss, nasa hospital po. He's in the hospital. He brought his son there because the son was sick. So instead of the boss being angry, he went to the hospital and he wanted to know what's really happening. And then when he entered the lobby, he he saw one guy crying in front of the billing station of the hospital. And he noticed the guy that was crying was the driver. And he didn't go there to approach him. He was just listening from afar. Because the hospital said, sir, you need more money. We need to do more procedures for your son or else your son will not survive. So the driver was crying, I don't have money anymore. Please, please operate my son. Please help me with these things. But to no avail, the the hospital said, sir, sorry, we can't help you. So eventually the dad went up, went back to the room where his son was. They were preparing to leave because they don't have money to pay the hospital anymore. But suddenly the nurse went in and the nurse said, sir, okay na po. Your bill has been paid. Somebody paid for it. And the driver said, who paid for it? Someone downstairs, I think you know him. He is looking for you. So he went down because he was excited. Who's this person? And then he was shocked. It was his boss. boss. So he, was, he ran down to the boss. He knelt down and said, sir, sorry, sorry. Sorry, I stole money from you. And thank you, sir, sorry, sorry. I will work and you don't need to pay me. I will work and you don't need to pay me. And the boss said, no, 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 just get up, get up. I noticed that you really need help. That's why I came here. You don't need to... Uh, pay for what you got. And, but I just don't want you to do this again. You know, since then, that father, that driver, decided to work really hard, extra hard even more for his boss. And not just that, because of the grace that was given to him, he became so generous to others. There were other fellow drivers that has you know, borrowed from him. And he decided to call each one of them. You don't need to pay me. I'm okay. You don't need to pay me. And he became generous when his son survived and eventually became well. He started giving to other people. Now, why am I telling that story, that parable? Because here's what I realized. When I realized that God has given me everything that I need, that I don't deserve anything that he has given to me, and that I will go to heaven, my future is perfectly secure 
in Him. When I realize that, then giving will be my heart's desire. That's the ultimate motivation why we give to God. Because He has given everything. Because He has given His Son. We know John 3.16. God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son to us. That whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. God has modeled perfectly giving. When we are recipient of that amazing grace, I tell you, it's easy to give because we learn contentment. We learn He is the greatest blessing and we learn that it honors Him when we give. What's our message again? Giving is the best use of money. Can I pray for you? Let's bow our heads. Father, thank you so much for speaking to all of us and even to myself, Lord. You know that all of us, we struggle sometimes when it comes to giving. But thank you for reminding us how beautiful giving is. It honors you. It makes us a blessing to other people. And there are rewards. But the, the rewards are there not just for us, but for us to even more be a blessing to others. Please, Lord, I really pray and I ask that you help each and every one of us have generous hearts. And maybe for some of us who are here listening, the reason why our heart is not that generous is because we don't know you. We don't have a personal relationship with you. We haven't received fully your grace. So I pray that today will be the day of that, that person's salvation, whoever that person is. If they need to humble themselves, then maybe today is that day that they need to humble and say, Lord Jesus, I want to receive your love. I want to receive your grace. And Lord, for a lot of us who have relationship already with you, remind us of how amazing your grace is. Remind us that we don't deserve everything that we have right now, but somehow you gave it to us. And remind us that in the future, it's fully secure because we are your children. We have nothing to be afraid of, nothing to worry about. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing love. Thank you for this day. We give you all glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you all.